Today, Ukraine is described not simply as a nation at war, but as a country fighting to survive beneath the densest, most drone-infested battlefield the modern world has seen. By night, the sky has become the primary front. Jets, cruise missiles, and infantry movements matter, but all of them take a backseat to a single recurring question. Can a 50-year-old German anti-aircraft cannon keep the lights on and the grid intact? When Berlin announced deliveries of the Gepard in 2022, critics dismissed the decision. Too old, too slow, too obsolete. That judgment proved premature. At the heart of this reassessment is an economic and tactical truth. When a threat is cheap and massed, the response must be cheap and sustainable. The Kremlin shifted its campaign from high-cost precision strikes to industrialized attrition using loitering munitions, cheap Iranian-made Shahids, and similar drones launched in waves. Designed to destroy infrastructure and sap morale, these loitering munitions cost roughly $20,000 to $30,000 apiece. The interceptors that Western partners field to stop them can cost orders of magnitude more. That price asymmetry is deliberate, central to the tactic. Send quantity to bleed the defender's inventory. The result has been an air campaign measured in tens of thousands, hundreds of attacks nightly, and by July 2025, Russia had launched more than 6,000 Shahed-type drones in a single month, with total wartime launches exceeding 45,000 since 2022, according to Ukrainian and international defense reports. The effect is predictable. Radar networks built to detect fast, high-altitude targets struggle with small, low-flying loiterers. High-end interceptors cannot be wasted on every low-value target without exhausting stocks and degrading capability to meet real strategic threats. Precision, in this context, gives way to endurance. The modern logic of air defense shifts from one shot, one kill, to a cheap, continuous, low-tier layer. Into that gap, the Gepard arrived not as nostalgia, but as adaptation. Born in the Cold War and designed to defend NATO armored columns from helicopters and low-flying aircraft, the Gepard mounts twin 35mm autocannons and an era-appropriate radar suite. In the 1980s, it was a potent point defense system. By the 2000s, it looked like a relic. Yet the exact traits sidelined by post-Cold War doctrine, rapid, high-volume direct fire, and a radar tuned for small, slow targets, became precisely the capabilities Ukraine needed to blunt swarm attacks. Within weeks of being pulled from storage, refurbished, and sent east, Japards were operating inside Ukraine. Crews with minimal training learned to apply the system to a different problem set. Not fast jets, but slow, small signature loitering munitions. The result was not myth, but arithmetic. The 35mm round at roughly $600 per round became a unit of measured economy. A single Shahed could be shredded with as few as seven rounds in the hands of a seasoned crew, and more typically required 20 to 30 rounds. That math is simple. Seven rounds at $600 per round equals $4,200. 30 rounds at $600 equals $18,000. Compared to interceptors that can cost from $100,000 into the millions per shot, the cost per kill with Gepard fire drops by an order of magnitude. That figure is more than a budget line. It is survival strategy. When a defender can reliably eliminate a low altitude threat for a few thousand dollars, rather than hundreds of thousands, high-end systems can be reserved for the truly strategic threats, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, and high-speed aircraft. Jeopards do the grinding work at the bottom of the air defense pyramid, so Patriots, Iris-T, NASAMs, and SAMP-T can preserve their interceptors for high-value tasks. Operational evidence accumulated quickly. Units reported nights when a single Jeopard accounted for multiple kills. Crews logged dozens of engagements and repeatedly demonstrated the system's ability to defeat not only loitering munitions, but, at the margins of its envelope, low-flying cruise threats. Video and after-action reports showed 35mm bursts shredding drones and, in limited reported cases, engaging low-flying cruise missiles at close range that were employing low flight profiles aimed at energy infrastructure. Those outcomes changed behavior. Attackers adjusted launch profiles and massing tactics. Planners had to account for a cost-effective counter that reduced the likelihood of mass penetration. That counterfactual matters because what the Japar defends is not merely a patch of 
of sky, but the electrical grid, the backbone of civil life. Modern societies depend on distributed infrastructure, power plants, substations, transformers, and control centers. A single impact against a key node can cascade into widespread blackouts. In winter, that collapse is not an inconvenience. It is a humanitarian crisis. Jepards, because they are mobile, can be stationed where they are needed most, parked beside a transformer yard, deployed near a thermal power plant, or moved to follow a threatened urban node. Mobility lets units guard substations, plants, and control nodes as threats shift. The system's value was underlined during a concentrated wave of attacks in 2025. In one night, attackers launched a very large mixed wave of low-altitude drones and glide munitions in an attempt to cripple the grid. That night saw hundreds of intercepts, including dozens at low altitude credited to Jepard units. Jepards were credited with dozens of low-altitude kills that prevented chain reactions inside energy networks. Every drone the Jepard destroyed was one less explosion at a substation, one less forced shutdown, one fewer hospital diverted to emergency generators. In aggregate, the contribution was decisive, layered defense held, and widespread blackout was avoided. Yet the Gepard's effectiveness exposed a political and industrial vulnerability, ammunition supply. The system's lethality depends on 35 mm rounds, and the world had not been making them in the volumes required for sustained high-intensity use. Swiss re-export rules initially restricted 35 mm ammunition and political decisions. That gap forced Germany and industry to re start production lines that had been dormant for decades. Engineers resurrected tooling, reconstituted supply chains, and requalified production processes under wartime timeframes. What would normally be a multi-year procurement and certification process became an industrial sprint. The scale of demand is unforgiving. A single Japard battery can consume between roughly 4,000 and 6,000 rounds in a heavy month. During intense strikes, crews may expend hundreds of rounds each night. Multiply that across battalions and sustained operations, and the monthly requirement reaches tens of thousands of rounds. Germany redirected industrial capacity, signed contracts, and escalated production to meet that need. The objective was simple, keep the barrels firing. Production and logistics solved one problem, but raised another. Doctrine and human factors. Ukraine did not receive just machines. It received crews who had to reimagine an old platform for a new fight. Manuals were out of date. Radar displays and parts lists reflected a different era. But the human factor proved the multiplier. Crews developed bespoke drill cycles and optimized engagement techniques for drones rather than aircraft. Novice operators might expend 60 to 80 rounds in a single engagement. Veterans learned to compress that to 7 to 15 rounds per kill. In a war where each shell has strategic value, crew skill is a force multiplier as relevant as any upgrade. That evolution, firing discipline, sensor discipline, and rapid target classification turned the Japard from an ex-Cold War system into a modern tool. Operational patterns hardened into doctrine, detect low signature targets, shift to optical tracking at close range, apply short controlled bursts designed to maximize hit probability, and conserve ammunition. Operators describe a cadence, radar detection, acoustic or visual confirmation, a measured two-second engagement window, and then rapid follow-up. That rhythm, repeated thousands of times, is what kept cities lit. Civilians felt the effect. Across urban centers, Kyiv, Kharkiv, Odessa, local narratives hardened around the same refrain. When the Gepard fires, the immediate danger recedes. The sound of twin 35mm cannons became, paradoxically, an auditory reassurance. It signaled that defenders were present, mobile, and able to absorb the attritional weight of repeated attacks. Morale, in this sense, is an operational multiplier. The knowledge that a neighborhood has active, proximate defenses changes how communities endure prolonged bombardment. Looking forward, combat experience created momentum for modernization. German and European defense firms proposed packages that preserved the Jepard's core lethality while upgrading its sensors, command and control interfaces, and electronic resilience. The logic is surgical. Keep the chassis and the twin 35mm lethality. Replace obsolescent electronics with software-driven radars. 
fuse sensors into broader C2 networks, and add automation to reduce crew workload. At the same time, industry presented next-generation low-altitude turrets, systems that pair 35mm guns with programmable airburst rounds, AI-assisted classification, and modern radar arrays. These systems promise higher single-shot lethality and lower rounds per kill, but come at substantially higher unit costs. That trade-off is the dilemma Europe now negotiates. Rebuild an industrial base around an existing, proven, and cost-effective platform, or invest in high-end, expensive systems that reduce ammunition consumption but are harder to procure in quantity. A pragmatic interim approach is emerging. Scale current production and upgrades for gap-filling needs while selectively fielding next-generation turrets where budgets permit. Local assembly, joint ventures, and industrialized supply chains in Ukraine are part of the strategic calculus, reducing transit vulnerabilities and accelerating tailoring from frontline feedback. History will judge simply when high-tech interceptors depleted their stocks, when sophisticated radars strained under saturation, it was the mechanically simple, high-volume gun that kept the lower layer of defense functional. The Gepard's resurrection is a case study in matching means to the character of a threat, endurance, and cost-effectiveness over elegance. Its return to relevance is a reminder that doctrine must adapt to reality. The closing question is practical and strategic. Having seen what a resurrected platform can accomplish, will Europe institutionalize the lessons of endurance and production capacity, or will it re-embrace procurement philosophies that prioritize platform sophistication over quantity? That choice will shape whether Europe can field enough low-tier defenses before the next drone war.